Hi guys, I'm Shmi and today I'm at Silverstone for the press launch with the new McLaren 675LT, the long tail, the most track focused and driver orientated version of McLaren's Super Series coming in over the top of the 650S of course. I'm here both lucky enough to be one of the first to get behind the wheel of the car but also as a customer as I placed a deposit for the 675LT a short while back and have my own car coming a couple of months from now so I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later on in the video and what the plans are to do with sharing the story, the ordering, the customization, the specification and the build through to delivery of my very car. But today is all about the drive. We're going to be here out on the track with the car at Silverstone, also out for a little bit of road driving as well. I'm going to show you through some of the history. There are a couple of McLaren F1 GTR long tails from 1997 in the pit lane behind me, well in the pits behind me, and also show you through some of the components, talk to some of the people here and take a good all round look at everything to do with this car, what it's like from a driving perspective, how excited I am as someone who's committed to buying one as well, and everything to do with the new McLaren 675LT. In the pit lane here then we have five of the 675 LTs just being prepared for the next press drives. We'll go over a little bit of the information though, so what you need to know, 675 LT because it is 675 PS, 666 brake horsepower, 700 newton meters of torque, so those figures are up 25 PS, 22 newton meters respectively from the 650S versus the 650S Coupe, it is 100 kilos lighter. A lot of weight saving has gone into that. New components, new design, more use of carbon fiber, titanium and other lightweight materials. And this particular car we're looking at here is in one of the new colors, Napier Green. There are five hero color specifications for the car. Starting around the front, you can immediately see there's a new carbon fiber splitter. It's more aggressive, it sticks out further towards the front and it has these end plates at the side. As standard on the LT, we have the satin carbon fiber finish. There is a new wheel design, 800 grams lighter even over the whole set than the McLaren P1 wheels. It's a new sort of 10 spoke, 5Y sort of spoke design. This is the super lightweight wheel, it's the option wheel on the car. And in this car, in the Hero spec, you also have the Napier Green matched caliper. It's based, of course, around the same 3.8 litre twin turbo V8, but again, that has been heavily reworked. 50% new components in the engine and a new design to it as well under the polycarbonate rear window. On the rear deck here, we've also got much more open space, more vents for airflow out of the car. We've got a new titanium exhaust system, a much larger rear wing, 50% larger than the 650S. That looks truly awesome in action as well. The rear bumper and diffuser has been totally reworked. More aerodynamic basis and design and shapes that you can see going on there with the bare carbon fiber look as well through the center. And just more open airspace to pull out the air through the rear of the car all around that you can see. On the interior, similar to an extent, but we've got bucket seats as standard. Obviously the race focus, lots of options for the club sport pack with a roll hoop, harnesses, but maintaining the very driver focus nature that started with the 12C in the Super Series through the 650S, of course. Around the side, we've got a new lower side skirt with this extra vent here because the radiators have been slightly rotated inside. And with this enlarged vent behind the door, coupled with that second vent, there is increased airflow and cooling capabilities, of course, in there. So continuing along, along the line, we've got the Delta Red, this color here, with the other wheel design 
available for the car, which can be had in various different tones, silver, stealth, or the two-tone sort of diamond cut finish. Beyond the second Delta Red car, we have Chicane Grey, the third of the Hero specifications, finished with McLaren orange calipers. There is also Silica White and a McLaren orange car as well, but it was Chicane Grey that I suppose was the launch specification at Geneva earlier this year. 675LT is limited to just 500 units and they are all sold out. Very shortly to head into production. Coupe form only. And from what we're hearing, it's a pretty impressive car, so I'm rather excited to get to drive it a little bit later on today. As you can see, a number of track orientated options, including the McLaren track telemetry pack with three cameras and data logging. We'll talk all about this as we go on. But needless to say, this is the ultimate incarnation of McLaren's Super Series model, the P11. Let's take a look around the interior and what's different from the 650S. So the first and most noticeable thing, of course, is the new bucket seats, carbon fiber back to bucket seat design, especially new for this car. Comes with the Alcantara and the embossed leather, sort of two-tone design. You can have those in different colors. 675LT embossed logo up on the headrest. You can have that with the club sport pack, with the roll hoops and the harnesses, of course, as well. This car's just with the standard seat belts, which is a very supportive and comfortable solution to the car for sort of mixed use. This car is still a very usable design. That's always McLaren's sort of aims with everything they're making. A change over the previous car down here is that you're straight through to the carbon fiber tub and you have the carbon fiber finish on the central tunnel as well. You have the optional floor mats, the 675 LT floor mats. But that's a difference and you can see the carbon fiber running all the way through up the central tunnel there towards the rear which is new for this vehicle on the central console you have satin carbon fiber now as standard for the lt rather than the glossy from before active dynamics panels changed so you still have the handling three settings normal sport track and the powertrain three settings but now you have a dedicated button here for the ESC settings, so the dynamic traction control, which has meant that the aero button moved from here down to here, and as a result, we've lost the winter mode setting. But if you're out in the winter, you're probably not driving this car. On the steering wheel again, satin carbon fiber. New shift paddles, obviously connected with the same rocker system as before, where you pull one and the other moves away but this time they're extended further up and down. Carbon fiber, very nice feel to those. Everything's Alcantara, but you can also have an Alcantara and leather package, whereby this would be Alcantara, this outer section would still be leather. Another change for this car, the air conditioning controls used to be here. To save weight though, they've been moved from these door panels into a control here on the iris system, but I'll go through that in a little bit more detail further through as well. But that's meant that a new tweeter speaker system has been able to be installed up here, which brings the sound level of the car slightly higher. I've been for a passenger lap, been shown the circuit, and I have to say initial impressions are pretty good, but now it is my turn to drive. I'm going to be jumping on board the Delta Red 675LT with Rob, my instructor. We're going to try out the different modes. I'm pretty excited. Let's jump in. It's strange getting into a left-hand drive car when you're used to the, uh, yes, yeah, the right-hand yeah, yeah. drive. You have to learn the McLaren swing. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, bum first, swing the legs. <laughs> Right. Okay. All good. Get yourself comfy. Okay. All right. Fire up. And she roars into life. Indeed. Head out. Keep it in. 
normal, normal to start. Yeah, that's it. As I say, entirely up to you. You just take control of the car now and... Uh... Well, let's go for two laps of each. Two laps of normal, two laps of sport, two laps of track. Chasing red. Indeed. 
every yeah, 675 yeah. needs that. Absolutely, yeah. Even if you only come to the track once. Yeah, Obviously yeah. you've got the camera set up as well if you download yeah. that as well later. Yeah, exactly. What an option, isn't it just? I mean, when you go on a track like this, I mean, this is a, this is a full data system, so you, yeah. it goes into the USB as well. You can download all downloads. the information. Yeah, exactly, and you can do overlays on different traces, sector times. So you can really, after a track day, sit down and analyze all of your data and all of your laps. Yeah, 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 the full set. Yeah. With video footage, Absolutely. with custom overlays yeah. and all sorts of Well, that's of it. If you go out with an instructor and get a delta time put down on the car for you, then you can sit down with your, with your overlay speed traces and uh, what have you and see where you, you, know, where, yeah, where yeah. you can build up. And, because uh, more often than not, when you're on a on a track mate with, a, with an instructor, you'll try and chase the time in areas where you think you need to, and not where you think you're okay. And it can be, often be the other way around. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. So you know, it it it, uh, it really helps with uh, with showing you where you want to be chasing the time. But that was a great drive, Tim. Oh, thank good. you very much. That was fantastic. First start in the 675, and I have to say, <laughs> I think the, the smile speaks uh, every word I could possibly want to speak. Absolutely. It was a brilliant start. Absolutely. Well, Especially you. having driven a circuit I so recently drove in the 650S as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you could just immediately feel it just that little bit, well, significant bit more. <laughs> Wowzers. I'm insanely jealous of you. <laughs> Knowing you're going to have one of these. It's going to be a... Uh, it's going to be a long couple of months. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There we go. Well, at least you got a little taste and yeah. you know what's coming. Good way to start. Sorry. Thank you very Brilliant. much. Thank Cheers, you. Tim. Nice to meet you. Track drive done and what a start. Having been here, like I said, in the 650S earlier this year, driving that exact same course, you could immediately feel the extra sort of emotion dynamics of this car and how much more sort of feedback and involvement there was driving it. The sounds we're hearing as they drive around here are just phenomenal. That was a really, really good start. I'm looking forward to driving it a lot on the road very shortly um, on from now, just because that's more my usual environment. So I'll be able to tell a little bit more about the car, but my initial reactions, wow, wow. I am so excited that I'm gonna be able to drive one of those again, probably back here. It's another event, pure McLaren event or something later in the year. But what a start in the McLaren 675 LT. They just look so amazing. And that driving experience, I'm speechless. I'm lost for words. Really, really good. Really good. has a number of different wing modes. You can see the wing in the aero mode here where it's up to a certain degree. When you then brake, the wing axe actually flies almost vertically, completely obscuring your rear visibility but acting as a huge anchor down onto the rear wheels for braking. Equally, it has DRS, so when you accelerate hard and flat on the straight, the wing will sit back down. Flat. <laughs> does that too. <laughs> the burnout mode then, what you've just witnessed, putting the car into sport or track on the handling and turning ESC off, using the traction off button. It properly allows the car to light itself up and set down some perfect 11s in the rubber, from the rubber, sorry, on the tarmac. So cool to watch. Just an added sort of example of what McLaren are trying to go for with this car, just making it more emotive and more sort of enjoyable as well as being savagely quick around the track. But that was really cool to watch. I'm going to do the loud start sequence, which means turning on the ignition, one press to power up, one press to engage ignition, and then I'm going to turn on the active panel before starting, and now give it a start. Wow. 
as you heard, what that does is it blips the engine significantly higher, much higher up the rev range, just over 5,000 RPM there, and sounds awesome on startup. <laughs> Too much enjoyment, let's shut the car off. And we're into silence. What a sound from that new exhaust system. After taking the LT around the track earlier, it's now my turn to take it out onto the road. And I think this is one of the bits I'm most looking forward to because I can realistically compare it in more detail to the 650S, the car I've done quite a few miles in out on normal roads and nice twisty road environments. So I'm going to be driving in the green car again here, which I'm very, very much looking forward to, sat next to my 650S alongside it. So let's jump in and take it out. then the 675 LT a day I have been looking forward to for a very long time to get behind the wheel. It's been about nine months since I first started wondering what this car was going to be like and now I'm going to be able to experience it and do a sort of 45 minute drive and tell you a little bit more about it. So the first thing of course I'm sat in a bucket seat. It's incredibly snug, nice fit, comfortable. The P1 seats were always brilliant so it's no surprise that the LT seat which is a sort of derivative of that is equally fine. There's a lot of headroom obviously, fits helmets, no problems. That's been designed to be that way. But it certainly feels like you're very low to the tarmac, looking out at an exceptionally sort of low angle out onto the road in front of us. We've got um, some stiffer suspension, 40% stiffer at the front, 60% stiffer at the rear, which is probably akin to the sport mode setting in 650S. So far, normal driving, just cruising along, it's not unreasonably stiff at all. I thought it might be slightly uh, more bumpy and sort of raw, but absolutely fine. I haven't yet got to playing with the settings though and turning it all up and dialing it into different modes to play with all of that. But I will do, which is all done, of course, just like before, by pressing the active button. First thing I'm going to do with active, because it just enables the panel, I still have it normal, normal, is go into manual mode just to have a play with some of the gears. It's a, it's a quick shift. <laughs> and that little traction, just a little pop in third gear there. But the upshift noise was awesome. I'm just going to drop that back again, drop down to, no, I'll stick it in third still. Not bad, not bad. And that's just a normal mode running in a manual on the panels. Let's pop it back into automatic just for the minute. So from a sound point of view, it's probably a touch louder because we have less glass. The glass is slightly thinner for uh, saving weight, saves a couple of kilos between the windscreen and the uh, rear window through to the engine bay as well. But um, it's not unpleasant in the normal mode. Obviously, as we turn it up, we also have an intake sound generator, the sort of uh, valve in the backboard that's going to open up on us a little bit. Um, so what I'll do is I'll turn both settings up to sport mode, which no longer changes the traction settings at all. just changes the uh, suspension, of course, is going to get a little bit firmer, uh, stiffer, better turning. And the gearbox is going to get a little bit more violent. And the sport mode is supposed to be all about emotion, so it is quicker, but it's also about um, having more excitement to the noise it makes and more feel to the experience. So when we then go to track, it changes again, but we'll keep it in sport and sport. I am going to press manual on the gearbox, though, because I want to use these new carbon fibre shift paddles that have been introduced for LT back down through the seven-speed gearbox, of course. Nice little pop on up shift. shifts are exceptionally fast. I'm sure you can hear on the camera there's a nice little pop on the upshift even though that's nowhere near the red line. Um, but they're quick. They are very, very, very quick. I sort of want to go a little bit quicker but there's only so much I can really do out on the road. It's a fast car. It's a very, very fast car. 
completely destroys my rear visibility and I can't see anything at all backwards right now. Um, so we might have to save that one just to the track, although when you're accelerating hard it does set itself back down flat. And the other button we have is the launch control mode, which again, can't really use that right now, but you probably know what it does. It gets you off the line fast, very fast. Those noises! That's amazing! I don't think that can ever get boring, ever. Sometimes when I film with the McLaren, people ask me what is with the clicking noise. That noise, or well, the click, is because the paddles have pre-cog, so you can give it a gentle pull, which will prepare the gearbox ready for the next gear, so that when you do pull it, it gives you the second pull, which is the click, and instantaneously it chips into gear, and off you go. And that's why it is so fast. I mean, it's 40 milliseconds anyway, so it's nothing, effectively. You can, I mean, 650S felt fast, and this feels really fast. Sure, higher up in the rev range, it's an even quicker shift as well. So, I'm talking a lot, I like this. This car is brilliant, and I'm going to put it into track and just get a little feel for some gear shifts in that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's less of the sort of playful upshift. Um, I guess that's all taking not so much concentration on making it fun, more concentration on making it fast. That is what this car is built for. Um, so, that's quite fun. I think realistically, you probably want it in sport mode. I'm sure if you put the handling in track, yeah, I can immediately feel a lot more of the road. It's very, very firm. I don't know if you can see me bobbling around a lot, but that made a pretty noticeable difference. So probably Sport Sport is perhaps the perfect sort of road driving setup, which is quite a nice place to be. I just can't get enough of that. That's just so, so awesome. I get asked an awful lot if I can have any one car in the world, what car would it be? And conveniently, I think we have a winner. The car right now I would most love to do. My road trips, looks amazing, sounds amazing, and just genuinely enjoy is the McLaren 675 long tail, the LT. I am having so much fun driving this car today, whether it's now around the country roads, whether it was on the track earlier, the looks of the thing, the reaction you guys give it out there when I post up pictures on social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, all of those. It's just such an unbelievably amazing package. It takes the already brilliant 12C and then 650S and it just elevates it to this whole new animal. There's probably more change from 650S to 675 than I think there was from 12C into 650S. It's so dynamic, so involving, so emotional in the way the sounds that come out of it, the way the whole package interacts. I'm completely, I don't even know how else to describe it other than saying that I genuinely am truly, truly excited about what's going to be coming up next year with this car. The opportunities, the trips, the adventures are going to be amazing. 
amazing. I can't wait to get through the specification options through to delivery of my LT, but anybody else out there who's got one coming, you have every right to be exceptionally excited. This is one hell of a car. It's a monster. Unfortunately, all good days have to come to an end, and I've got to wrap up today my first adventure with the 675 LT, a full in-depth look, taking it out on the track, driving it out onto the road, and I have to say my overriding impressions are that this thing is really a baby P1. It is like a P1 without the hybrid stuff. It's so much more than the 650S, so much more than I anticipated. I've been through the step up from the 12C to the 650S, but that's like this, and then the LT is like up here somewhere. It's a completely different game. It's been a fantastic day, brilliant car to drive. The sound is insane. The driving experience is so emotive and involving. It's a really, really special car. And with only 500 of them to hit the roads, they're not exactly going to be very common cars. I am so, so pleased that I put my name down for one of these back at the end of last year because it's, it's really something. It's really something special. Just look at it. What a car. That was one of my favorite drives in a car in a while, in a long time. I'm, I'm very, very excited about this. Handing the keys back is something I really, really don't want to have to do for this one. I could just sneakily swap it with my 650S key. It is quite similar after all. But what an amazing day. I hope you've enjoyed seeing a full in-depth look at the whole story behind 675 LT. But there's a lot more of that to come on the Shmi 150 channel as we follow the adventures of my very own car. That, like I said, I'm going to be able to film a little bit more of the story than you're normally able to see with a car like this. A little bit about choosing the options, the specification, visiting McLaren Special Operations and adding on some extra unique touches, possibly even colors, who knows. Then we'll go through the whole process, the build process. I'll be able to show you something Thing. Still got to discuss all of the details about my car as it hits the production line then gets built goes through testing and ultimately back towards McLaren Manchester for delivery So this is going to be a really really exciting storyline. I've got a lot planned I can't wait to share it all with you I'm really really looking forward to both that the build up the hype the excitement and then next year's adventure in the Schmiemobile 675 LT of course they'll also be a part about saying farewell to the 650s it's been a brilliant time with that car anyway thank you very much for staying tuned and watching the entirety of this piece I really hope you enjoyed it this much detail about a car that I'm both fanatical about and very very interested in but that's it for right now thank you again and I'll catch up with you again very soon cheers Comparing the 675LT to the 650S, the Spider, my car that sat alongside I can make an announcement that I've been keeping under wraps now for a very long time. Before 